This vintage Rat reissue is the first guitar pedal I ever owned. It's near and dear to my heart for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them being it is the first guitar pedal I ever owned. Um, it's the vintage reissue of the Rat. There are quite a few different models of the Rat down through the years. Uh, I've been using this almost uh, 25 years, so as long as I've been playing electric guitar. Um, it's also near and dear to my heart because it's one of my central pedals. I use it pretty much all the time, so it's pretty integral to my sound. Uh, I also, uh, it has a special place in my heart because it was a gift from my father. My parents grew up playing music as a hobby and that definitely was an inspiration to me in terms of taking on music uh, when I was growing up, but my father was not one for effects pedals or loud guitar. Um, so the fact that he still went and bought me one is kind of pretty cool. He went on a business trip to New York. I was growing up in Ireland at the time. He came back home and he had talked to somebody in the guitar store and asked them for some kind of recommendation. They'd recommended this pedal. Um, so kind of unusual uh, thinking about my father that he would go and buy this. I've had it ever since and it, it's pretty sturdy. It has a pretty heavy metal box. So it's fairly durable, although I've had to have it repaired at least once uh, over the years. At one point it stopped working and I went to the guitar store to get it repaired and they told me they weren't sure they could repair it because there's a special type of transistor or resistor that really uh, is central to shaping the sound and they weren't sure they could get these anymore um, and I panicked because I thought well if I don't have that box and that sound what am I going to do so I went and bought what they said in the store was the new version the kind of reissue of it so I bought this thinking okay great if one fails I have another one they didn't exactly have this precise model so buying this one, plugging it in and playing it, it just didn't quite sound the same. I just thought it was a little overbearing. It sounded like some other distortion pedals and it just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So a little disappointed. Thankfully, they were able to find the part. They were able to fix this one. And I went back to playing that one. So I just tossed this aside in a box and really haven't used it. But I'm curious now to do a bit of an A-B test against them. Um, if you look at the RAT website, um, you'll see all the different models they've made, made down through the years. They started making these in 1978. They mass produced them from 1979. This particular one that I've been playing with most of the time is the Vintage Rat Reissue. This was made between 1991 and probably 1996, 1997. The reason I know that this is a reissue and not an original is because it says Proco on the label there on the box rather than Proco Sound Inc which the originals have. So that's why I know this is a vintage reissue. This one, I can tell by the fact that it has a slightly sloped enclosure box. Uh, I can tell that this dates from uh, 2003 or later. They were actually making these Rat 2s from 1988. Um, the reason you can tell it's a Rat 2 is because it has a little LED light that lights up red. Um, and also the, the shape of the box and the fact that it has that kind of block capital letter luminous Rat as opposed to the logo and the more stylized curly Q. Uh, this pedal is very popular. It's been played by all kinds of musicians from Tom York to Buckethead to uh, Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth to James Hetfield apparently, Kurt Cobain apparently had one, Jeff Beck as well. When I got this in college and started playing it in my band at the time, at first I thought, what the hell, this black box, this looks awful, this doesn't look like anything I've seen on TV, it doesn't look like anything I've seen my friends playing, but as soon as I plugged it in and started to play with it, I started to like the sound, and I also got a lot of great feedback from people saying, oh no, you've got a great one there, this is a pretty interesting pedal, I think Kurt Cobain has used one, Nirvana was always a big, a big band that I was following at the time, so knowing that had kind of that sound was was great. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug the, plug both of them in side by side and just test them out because it's been a few years since I I played the the uh, new one that I got, and I wanted to see does it still give me that sense of well this is just not quite the same flavor. This is still a little bit overbearing. For this A/B test, I'm going to play my Stratocaster Stevie Ray Vaughan custom model, which I've been playing a very long time now. I have this by 20 years, and just to limit how much setting adjustment. I'm probably going to stick uh, largely to the bridge pickup, which is the humbucker, the Seymour Duncan humbucker. I'll be playing this through um, a Vox amp, which is which gives a really good sound. Both of these rats have the same sorts of controls. They have a distortion knob, which increases how much of the effect you want. They have a filter, which is sort of like a tone, and they have a volume control. And I'm going to A-B test them in largely the same settings. 
Uh, what's handy about this reissue is it also has a battery pack which you can undo either with your hands or with an Allen key and um, that simply removes and you can replace a 9 volt battery. Um, the reissue also has the same thing. So both of them have the 9 volt battery. They also take a 9 volt DC adapter. Now this is this is fine but it's kind of annoying because um, your standard 9 volt adapters that you buy on a pedal board or that you buy on the daisy chain they'll usually have this kind of a you know this kind of a plug which doesn't really work for the input here so what you end up having to do is use some kind of an adapter as I've done here so you can use your standard off-the-shelf plug or you actually have to get a 9 volt adapter a 9 volt power supply that plugs directly into it so that's just a little bit inconvenient because it just makes it just that little bit different from all the other pedals that are on your pedal board this is my clean tone sound I'm gonna start out with the rats at about 9 o'clock on the distortion the filter is pointing straight up to midnight and the volume I'm gonna leave at about halfway so first of all that's the vintage reissue. This is the rat too. at this low level of distortion I feel like it's a lot more overbearing and just electric and a lot more high-end and um, that's great if that's, if that's the sound you're going for but it's definitely not the same sound as the vintage reissue on the left this is the Rat 2 on the right and this is the vintage reissue Already, I definitely feel like there's a distinct difference. I'm going to turn the distortions up to midnight. This is the vintage on the left. Let's see what the rat sounds like with half the distortion. still for me has that same feeling that it's it's a beautiful blistering hot sound but it's just definitely it's a it's more overbearing than the vintage sound we'll just crank it up one more notch and we'll start with the vintage reissue see what the what the rat 2 does Let's just go all the way with the distortion on both of these and just let's just see what that sounds like.
pretty meaty. The um, I have a feeling this rat pee is just gonna just really over crush it. funny because at, as I go to the upper end of the distortion I don't feel like the the rat 2 is quite overcooking it as much it seems like they start to approach each other but there's still a difference in the sound um, still feels like it's not quite the same grunge era sound it, it feels a little more towards blistering shredding metal or crazy blues and it feels like it's losing some of that muddy um, texture that maybe would go with the Nirvana sound. The other thing you can do with these pedals, I'm going to bring the distortion down a little bit to halfway to just demonstrate, is you can adjust the, the filter. So we're going to bring the filter all the way to the right, which should give us a bit of a muddier sound. <laughs> Definitely a muddier sound. Let's try that on the reissue. It's muddier, but not quite as muddy. Let's try the filter in the other direction completely. Should just sharpen the whole sound up. Still feels overcooked and it, it kind of calls for a blistering blues solo, which is not a good thing because I'm not that great at that. Um, but it, it sort of the sound invites me to want to just mess around in some pentatonic, and you know, that's kind of the worst thing for me. So, look, if that's what you're looking to do, maybe this is the pedal for you. But I honestly feel like the vintage reissue rat just has a more versatile sound for indie rock, for alternative rock, for folk rock, for grunge, um, and it's a little less uh, on the blistering blues or shredder metal side that you get with the the Rat 2. So that's the review of the pedals. I think it kind of confirms for me what I remember, which is the new Rat, it just, it's blistering, it's kind of electric, it's red hot, it just, it, it just feels a little overbearing. Now that might be the sound you want to go for in certain moments and that might have its usages, but really it is a it is a different sound to the vintage reissue rat. They do not sound exactly the same. They're close, but they're not the same. So personally, I'm gonna to stick to the big box that I've got um, rather than the new one, but uh, it does have its uses. Um, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. I've seen some other videos on YouTube where they review um, different rat models, and I watched a few of those because I was fascinated too. Um, so definitely interested to hear your thoughts, and as always, uh, if you liked this or you watched it, just click the like button, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.